everyone, my name is Day and welcome to Spanglish Generation. If you're new to my channel, welcome, bienvenidos. Please feel free to look around and if you find value in the content that I post for you every single week right here, make sure that you support by subscribing, liking, commenting, and of course, sharing. You know I'm on a mission to help you understand the reality about life in Cuba. That's why today I have gathered three challenges about a common Cuban household that if you aren't Cuban you may not be aware of. So without further ado let's get right into it in no particular order. The first challenge is lack of privacy. Communist Cuba has lots of resources for the building of five-star facilities for tourists but when it comes to housing the government has failed as it has in so many other areas. Due to severe house shortages, families have found themselves having to live together even as they grow and expand. It's common to see a two bedroom home or apartment hosting two to three different families. Here they have to share a kitchen, the bathroom and whatever common areas are left. People have to make arrangements to live with their parents once they get married because there simply is no place to go. And most people don't have the money to buy a new property. A common practice is to build up when space allows since most of the single family homes in Cuba have a cement top, people keep building living areas on top of that. Of course that requires money and materials and that isn't always readily available. So there is a large amount of the population that actually lives in crowded circumstances where their privacy is compromised and they have to face the typical and increasing inevitable social conflicts that come with, well, having to share a small living space with your in-laws and their in-laws and their kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Challenge number two is managing your food. Most Cubans live on survival mode and this is a mechanism used by the regime to maintain people preoccupied with thinking how they're going to meet their basic needs. If you keep people on survival mode, they have little energy or, or time to rebel or think outside of that. The basic food in Cuba is rationed, which is sold to the population at a discounted price. Really bad quality food, but yes, it's rationed and it's available, available. Food is also scarce. So you really have to manage the amount of food you consume and how you distribute that based on the amount of people that live in your home. For example, the last time I checked, each person was eligible for five eggs per month. That means basically one egg per person per week or one big omelet to share at a designated time of the month. Are there other resources for food? Yes, but they are also scarce and very expensive and a lot of the time exclusively available in foreign currency. So that leaves the majority of the Cuban population without family abroad having to do miracles to resolver, which is basically the Cuban term for resolving the issue. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to preserving your food is electricity. Outages are a part of daily life in Cuba and electricity can be out anywhere from four to eight hours of the day or night depending on where you live. You can imagine how frustrating it is to have made a seven hour long line to buy chicken for your family and then have it go bad because you can't keep it properly refrigerated. Cuba is not like other countries where a lot of people have electrical plants or even access to ice in order to preserve their food. That just isn't the case. And challenge number three is running water. When was the last time you opened the faucet in fear that nothing would come out? I remember mine very clearly. I was visiting Cuba. The water in general in Cuba used to arrive two to three times per week. But at this point, I've heard of it taking as long as two weeks to arrive. In populated or developed areas, the water comes directly from the main water line and fills the tanks in your home. Now you have to budget that water because if for some reason it takes a long time for the water to come again and you run out of water from your tanks, you're stuck without water. So what do people do when the water comes in? They fill up as many containers as they possibly can so they can have water to brush their teeth, wash their face, cook, wash dishes, etc. Fact, flushing toilets is not popular in a regular Cuban home. 
I know this may seem disgusting, but people can't afford to waste water that they can use for things that are essential. So flushing the toilet is usually reserved for number twos, and most toilets in Cuba aren't flushed by pushing a button or pulling a lever. It's actually a bucket that you dump in to do the work. In a home with many people in one bathroom, showers are few and far between. So you must wash your body with a bucket and a cup. Oh yes, make sure that bucket lasts to rinse every single inch of that figure, darling. And if you live in a building where the water pressure isn't strong enough to reach your condo, you're stuck having to haul the water up in buckets to that eighth floor. Since running water isn't readily available, people have to wash their dishes and rinse them in that same murky water because you can't just afford to run the water if you do have a faucet. So it isn't only inconvenience, but it actually presents a health risk. Hygiene is compromised. I hope these facts help you understand a little bit of the challenges that Cubans face in their households every single day. Knowing how people live around the world opens our eyes to how blessed we truly are. Please don't take anything for granted. Electricity, 24 seven, water, your own room or space. Come on, there are people right across the Florida stretch longing, longing for those simple things that we don't pay any attention to. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video to be interesting, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Now is my time to shine. Let's go. When your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told, yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go.